Well, Monday morning means it's time for Plus Minus here on the Locked on Predators podcast. A lot of those to give out after the Preds drop their second game uh, to the Dallas Stars in three days. What has gone wrong over the past two games? And when is the panic meter set in? Not anytime soon, but still a bit, bit of a cause for concern. That's today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Your Locked On Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day every single day. We are your Preds podcast that is free and available to listen on all platforms I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and editor at OnTheForeCheck.com, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I am Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer and editor at InsideThePreds.com. All right. So Monday, it is time for plus minus. You guys know how that works. We give out pluses to the things we like about the Preds play over the past week, minuses to the uh, the ones we didn't like. And Ann, I know we like to be optimists, but I feel like I have to start out with a collective minus and that is a minus to you and i oh. a podcast because in all of our preseason podcasts we talked so much crap about the dallas star <laughs> i was hoping you would not remember <laughs> i think when we did i, I believe it was with uh, Seth to Paul for locked on well, but I believe at one point somebody called them the most overrated team in the central. Uh, neither of us were exactly high in them in our fan poll. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think like 2% of people voted for the Dallas stars and who is going to be like the Preds biggest non yeah. threat. And <laughs> I don't know if somebody in the Stars locker room just listens to all the Locked On podcasts. They should because they're all great. Uh, I don't know if some quotes got around, but uh, it feels like our, we're starting our week uh, eating a big bowl of crow. Uh, yeah. It did not look good against Oh, the my Dallas gosh. Stars. And the Dallas Stars look pretty good these past two games. It was... It was bad, and I I had the same thought. I'm like, no, 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 no. Dallas is a team in the Central Division that we're really not going to have to pay much attention to. Oh, crap. Like, look at us now. Look at us now. Yeah, Dallas is not a team I, I don't think that was on the radar for a lot of people as being legit. Like, they were going to be in the middle because they weren't going to be, like, Chicago or Arizona. But here we are lost two to Dallas that's already one more than we lost last year <laughs> so yeah, you, like here we this, are here we are like we've got some things we're gonna need to work through friends we've got some big things we're gonna need to work through yeah not ideal and it's Dallas so I'm just gonna be real like you know statistics aside I don't ever want to lose to Dallas like ever since the winter classic of 2020 and the whole Ryan Ellis Corey Perry thing like yeah. no uh, division games sting sting a little bit more yeah. especially because it feels like there's like kind of a uh a little bit of a uh, a fan rivalry especially with the stars yeah that's fans too but i mean you know you, you gotta look at this and just think like what went wrong because you know the predators and now look again they're t- again as we said last week they're just two games like right. They're just two games against what is turning out to be a pretty decent team. And the Preds are still two and two. So they're still a 500 hockey team right now. Um, but I think when you look at the scores, four to one and then five to one, it's hard not to look and be like, okay, maybe there's some something going on here. Yeah, the inability to generate offense, and it's not even the inability to generate goals. It was just their inability to generate high danger chances was a little bit uh, discouraging. It was a little bit alarming. And look, hats off to Jake Ottinger, who is 
you know, he's an incredible goalie. We talked about it last week. He's like the walrus from the Geico commercial. Like he, he holds that goal and, and he really did a great job with whatever the predators threw at him. I just don't think the predators threw some of their best hockey at him, but you know, watching him play, it's like, well, would it have made a difference? I mean, the Predators scored one goal in each game against the Stars. One goal in each game. And this is a team that had 240, you know, 240 goal scorers last season. They brought in Nino Niederreiter. You know, they packed this lineup with a little bit more offensive punch. And, you know, against Dallas, we scored two whole goals. Two whole goals, Nick. Yeah, and it so as we move into our plus minus, let's just go ahead and get one of my minuses out of the way. And that's the Preds mm-hmm. top line. Like where oh, have the Preds yeah. top line been uh, since that first game against San mm-hmm. Jose? You look at, you look at the stats. Um, Mikhail Granlin was on the ice for all four of the, uh, the, the stars, non empty net goals. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's you go up and down the lineup, you know, Matt Duchesne only has two points this season. Um, Philip Forsberg only has two points this season. Um, mm-hmm. Where is Roman Yossi? One point. Yeah. That was the uh, the first game against the San Jose Sharks. Um, second game, sorry. But still, one point in four games for a guy who almost had 100 points last year. Like, mm-hmm. where are the people that have, like, like so far this season? Like, where yeah. are they? Yeah. And you know, you know that it it bothers me. You know, I am a Matt Duchesne defender till the end. I will crawl into my casket defending Matt Duchesne. But I do want to say that one of the things that I noticed in these couple of games is that I think he's one of those players who's trying to do a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. Like you know, and, and maybe that's a thing with the top line. Like, I think, I don't know if there is a mental thing like, hey, we've got to carry this team. We did it last year. I don't know if they're not into their group. But what is frustrating to me is that in training camp, they looked like they were, you know, they looked like they had it going on. They looked like they picked up, you know, right where they had left off with each other as far as reading and anticipating where the other was going to be and kind of having that hockey sonar thing the peter tingle going and it just there was just a complete lack of it in these games you know and and then there's a couple of times where i felt like okay matt duchene you know i love you and i know you can do that move but we need to win hockey games without you having to do extra like we need to not be so extra so yeah that top line i thought in yesterday saturday's game i thought uh Philip Forsberg, super physical, like he, you know, really great, you know, as far as checking and being physical and all of that. But offensively, the top guys are generating bub kiss. It's not yeah. great. Yeah. And again, it's, like, it's, it's too early to in the season to be mm-hmm. like, it's like, were the Predators just bad or were the Predators, or were the Stars just really, really good? Because you mm-hmm. can turn around and say the Stars we're just really, really good. We talked a little bit about it mm-hmm. on Friday's show after Thursday's game. You know, the way they were playing us, it was kind of like the way we play mm-hmm. other opponents, where it's just that super physical, um, suffocating forecheck kind of force the other team into getting off their game a little bit. That's what the Stars did to us in these two games. And again, to kind of to bring it all home, Again, we're four games into an 82-game season. Nobody's hitting the panic meter yet. Um, Nobody is being like, wow, you know, the Preds are going to have to undergo some major changes. This is just kind of a warning to say, like, look, the way you've played these past two games, quite frankly, even that that second game in Prague, Mm -hmm. just isn't good enough to sustain the season, and this is what you're going to need to do to turn it up. Um, so, the, you know, again, not like a panic meter or we're not calling for anybody's job or being like, right. you know, you sent the wrong person to Milwaukee or anything like that. <laughs> Don't start uh, people. This is just kind of a brutal honesty thing in which the mm-hmm. Preds are going to have to play a lot better than they did uh, the than they did the past two games, because if this is going to be kind of the status quo or continual habit throughout the whole course of the season, uh, the Preds aren't going to get to where they need to be. So, yeah, I yeah. guess that's kind of the level-headed summary 
now that we've got on all our anger out or have we? <laughs> or, or have we <laughs> well let's find out if we had or not so let's get to some more pluses and minuses uh we're gonna do that right on the other side of the break but first uh today's show is brought to you by our friends at simply safe the numbers don't lie people in the last decade over four million people have chosen simply safe home security to protect their home you don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right at simply safe your safety is the only thing that matters i know because i use simply safe in my own home they protect you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back um, with 24 7 professional monitoring simply safe's agent call you the moment a threat is detected and dispatch police or first responders in an emergency even if you're not home or can't be reached Simply, Simply Safe blankets your home in protection with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door, HD security cameras for inside and outside your home, smarter ways to detect motion that only alert you when a threat is real, and even hazard sensors that instantly detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. Our monitoring experts use proprietary advanced response technology to visually confirm when a break-in is real so you can get the highest priority police dispatch. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. But again, visit simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, Ann, let's continue with plus minus. I'm I'm just gonna yield the floor to you. Give me a plus, give me a minus, give me whatever he want to give me, and we will dive into it. All so right. So directions. I mean, there's so many words and so few we're allowed to say on the podcast now. So let's start with a plus. Um, my first plus is is kind of a pretty obvious one, but I'm gonna give my biggest, fattest, juiciest plus to Nino Niederreiter. Nino has four goals in four games. Look, goal a game average, people. If you want to panic about like where the Predators record is four games in, then let's rejoice over where Nino Nita Rider's goal per game is four games in. Yeah. So, you know, if we're gonna pick and choose our stats, let's focus on that one. Um, love what I'm seeing from him on the ice. And I and I think everybody can agree, like this is. An addition where you brought in somebody that fits the Predators' identity so well, plays well with Johansson. Uh, they're going to figure out who, you know, I think Ellie Tolvanen looks really good with them. I think the three of them look great together. You know, Hines hasn't committed to that, but, you know, we'll see. But the other thing that I want to say about Nino Niederreiter, and one of the reasons I want to give him my biggest, fattest plus is because he really is able to call a spade a spade. Like, he has come onto this team and you can tell that he really has a hunger. This is somebody who wants to win. Like, you know, he came to this team. Yes, Roman Yossi kind of facilitate, facilitated that conversation. But he also came to this team because he felt like it could be competitive. And I think he is bringing that competitive spirit and that desire to win. And I think that that is really important. He's not afraid to say it. So... You know, after the second loss to Dallas, they asked him, you know, what's going on. And of course, you know, these players can kind of give you a, well, we'll have to kind of look at the tape and see what it says. And da, da, da. Nino Niederreiter's just like, we we're waiting for something to happen instead of dictating what our play was. We weren't playing to our identity. You know, we were better at that in Prague and we got here and we're not great at it anymore. And I'm like, welcome home, Nino. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, thank you for saying it out loud because, you know, I think sometimes you know bless their hearts i just think sometimes hockey players are don't use the media like maybe they could but so overall plus to him on ice bigger plus to him off ice like thank you for coming in here thank you for having a competitive fire thank you for being willing to not wait till you know you're you know one of the guys and you've been there a while before you speak up and say hey this is a problem like Thank you for diving right in. So, Nino Niederreiter, fat, fat plus, my friend. He is going to be a great host of the Locked On Predators podcast someday when his playing career is <laughs> over. I, uh, we we should try to get him. Can you imagine? Like, dude, ask him anything. 
Yeah. Why did Hell you yeah. why did you cheap shot UC Soros that one year? We would probably not ask him that right away. Uh, <laughs> but I think if we UC did, Soros. he'd be like, here's yeah. why. I yeah. wanted to win and he was in my way. Do you think they had, do you think they ever brought that up in the locker room? Because the Preds were mad at Nino Nieder. Oh, they were they were fat mad about that. Yeah, um, I, can't remember, I, I can't remember who it was, but somebody like straight up just tried to fight Niederreiter the next game, and Niederreiter wouldn't go. I can't remember yeah. who. It was. Michael McCarron, maybe, or was that was that back in the Jared Tenorti day? Still, I don't know. I can't. Was, I don't remember, somebody. but I. Yeah, I remember that. But he was like, "Yeah, nah." I think probably he looked into UC Soros' sweet face and like had had his hockey shame moment when he yeah. first came here. I, that's I have to believe that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, he's a competitor. Like Nino Niederreiter, he's a competitor. Like he freaking wants to win, and and I I I like that. Like come on in here and and say the things, my friend. Don't. You don't have to take your shoes off at the door. Come on in and say the things. So, yeah. yay. Uh, so, so kind of a multi-faceted uh, uh, plus on that one, both his play on the ice and his honesty yes. off of it. I like it. Yeah. I like the nuance. Um, on that same uh, level, you know what? I'm just going to I'm just gonna complete the trifecta here. I'm going to give two pluses, one to Ryan Johansson and one for Ellie Tolvanen. Uh, let's it. just – that line shall we because that seems to be the only line that's really clicking for nashville right now now we talked about niederreiter and johansson that pairing a lot and how you know they have familiarity playing with each other how they look good all through camp uh, and how they looked really good in those first couple of games and you know we said it in, in game three and it kind of carried over to game four too that was kind of the only line that looked like they were really threatening Dallas at all. Like the only ones that could really yeah. break through uh, that press, break through that high four check. And that carried again to the last game too. But the person we haven't really talked a whole lot about is Ellie Tolvanen. Now he was the guy, remember, we thought he was going to start the season on the fourth line with mm -hmm. Cody Glass. They were sort of the two that were building chemistry throughout the year. Uh, unfortunately, the key for Sherwood didn't exactly work out on the second line. In fact, healthy scratch uh, the last game. Kind of, we'll get kinda, to that. Kind of looking like a little bit of a yeah, saw that coming move. Um, but we'll Ellie get Tolvanen, to that. Ellie Tolvanen has stepped up, and he has looked every bit of the player he should be on mm -hmm. that second line. Every bit the player we thought he would be consistently last year. You know, not only three points uh, to start the season, including a goal and two assists, but his 200-foot game picked up Incredible. right where he last year. Uh, like I said, very good at breaking through that Dallas forecheck uh, the other night and very good at helping da slow down Dallas's rush because that was the big thing was Dallas really – rush the puck a lot you saw a lot of kind of odd man chances and stuff like that this wasn't they didn't do the dump and chase um mm -hmm. a whole lot they went for it they put the put in the zone and i thought ellie tolvanen did a, did a very good job containing the puck keeping dallas from having to okay we got to slow it down we got to set up the you know a five on five opportunity instead of you know pushing and possibly giving up um, an odd man chance. So Ellie Tolvanen, you know, we talked about Ryan Johansson a little bit, but Ellie Tolvanen is somebody on that line uh, really want to highlight for his play so far this season. Yes, I agree. And you know what? That is one of the stories and, and we're all in love with Cody Glass and his, you know, process. But I, I love seeing Ellie Tolvanen be successful and I love it for Ellie Tolvanen, but I also love what it says about John Hines because I secretly had a fear that John Hines was maybe a little bit done with Tolvanen because towards the end, you know, he had those healthy scratches last season. And I love that you're seeing John Hines go, nope, this, you know, this kid has proven to me I'm, you know, he's willing to say, yeah, nope, this kid's game is ready and I'm not going to write him off. So I yeah. agree. Ellie Tolvanen, huge bright spot for the Predators. Huge, great story. And, and good kid like really glad to see it for him because he's it's not been easy last season was not easy for ellie tolvanen yeah i mean we got to the point where you and i were debating um you know 
-hmm. is this kind of a Victor Arvidsson writing on the wall where it just doesn't look like Tolvanen's going to fit in what John Hines wants to do. Uh, and then he's turned around and had a very good camp and he's had a very good start to the season so yeah. far, starting to look a little bit more like the two way player we thought he was going to be. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Should we dive into a real quick minus? Are we ready? Do you want to do that or do you want to, let's hit, let's hit a break first and then let's, let's end on a couple more minuses. Okay. Cause it's just Monday folks. And that's how we're going to roll. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to thank you for making locked on predators your first listen today. Now, when you're done here, go make your second listen game to game NHL. This is a great program. You're going to want to check out every day after there are uh, NHL games to cover. Every moment, every top performance, every result locked on game to game is going to cover every NHL game across the league with local analysis that only locked on can deliver. You can follow game to game on locked on NHL. It's available on anywhere that you find your podcast and it is available on YouTube. So check it out game to game. All right, Ann, go ahead. <laughs> dive in dive into some minuses okay i've got several i'm gonna try to keep it short because i'm trying to be a optimist okay my first minus is touching on something you were talking about and it's the whole Kiefer sherwood healthy scratch thing here is my beef my friends the nashville predators as a team played like dookie against Dallas. That's what's real. Okay. The whole entire team did not play well. My minus comes to the fact that the people who are going to foot the bill for that are players like Kiefer Sherwood. Nobody is going to come out and be like, eh, Matt Duchesne might hmm. need to, yeah, well, we saw that coming. So the top players who are not performing well continue to start, which I get they're the top players and all that stuff. What frustrates me is that this is all coming back on players like Zach Sanford, like Kiefer Sherwood, um, like Cole Smith. Oh, we knew they were bad. Look, y'all, they played the same way everybody else did. Yeah. But because you're able to swap them out, and you have depth in the fourth line, that's why Kiefer Sherwood was healthy scratched. It is not that Kiefer Sherwood just was a joke and wasn't really good. It's that that's where you can swap them out. Um, you know, so that's a little bit of beef for me. That's a little bit of minus that narrative of, yeah, well, we knew those, we knew those guys shouldn't have made it. We knew we should have kept Tomasino and Sherwood wasn't gonna, you know, wasn't gonna be real and Cole Smith's not gonna be real. Y'all zip it. Nobody played well. Yeah. And I, I, <laughs> by no means whatsoever am I looking at this and saying Kiefer Sherwood is the reason the Predators are losing. Right. The game. We've already covered why the Predators are losing these games. We haven't even touched on a big one that we haven't really talked about yet. And um, mm -hmm. so, you know, he nobody is blaming Key for Sherwood or Cole Smith. But you have watch you been on Twitter? <laughs> well, okay. Don't anybody, just don't. Like, anybody rational is not okay. Bad. But okay, it's hard to watch how Key for Sherwood played. Uh, I mean, he got a great game one. Game one uh -huh. looked like, oh, yeah, that was definitely. Uh, when the Predators started to struggle a little bit against the Sharks late in the game, uh, in game two, you kind of saw it a little bit. You kind of saw it in the, uh, the last Stars game a little bit where just it didn't really look like he could, could get much going. Um, and, you know, I get it. Like it's nobody played well against the stars. I would love to see him get more opportunities because I don't think you can judge his whole body of work mm -hmm. um, based on, you know, two games in which a lot of the team played bad. Um, it's just one of those things that you watch and it's like, was this just a feel good camp story or, you know, is, is there actually something there? Yeah. I mean, I get that. I guess my frustration is I feel like you, you know, we talked about it. You look at the top line. They didn't do what they're supposed to do, you know, yeah. and it's frustrating to me that the narrative comes back to, well, we took a chance on these guys that weren't, you know, that hadn't proven anything. And I think the guys who have proved something aren't playing well either. So it's just a little bit discouraging to me. 
just to kind of see that narrative. And I hate that when the entire team isn't playing well, they're the, those are the guys who are just quickly, and, and I get it's the nature of the game, but it's just a little bit discouraging to see them kind of be the, the people thrown under the bus. You're not, I mean, you're not going to bench Matt Duchesne. I get it. No. But I also hate that we've written off what those guys did at camp already. So that's that's my that's my emotional minus for the day. Well, it's not. That's one of my emotional minuses for the day. Do you have anything you'd like to jump? Why don't you go ahead and give us a minus? Because I could just go and we're, we don't need that. Do we want to talk about UC Soros? Want How? is not the verb. Let, yeah. let me... Let me let me phrase this. How do we talk about UC Soros? That's a great question because I I struggle with this, Nick. After these two games, I struggle with this because on the one hand, not gotten a lot of help. You know, you look at especially game two, a lot of breakaways. Um, but also, do we want to talk about UC Soros? <laughs> Because look, now, you kind of have to have this with the same caveat of nobody played well. Right. But, I mean, mm. let, let me say this. There are a couple of those plays mm -hmm. that I think UC Saros makes a year ago. Yes. Or a couple of plays that I'm used to seeing UC Saros make. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um. That I think that's I think that's a great way to say it. I think that's a great way to say it. Yeah, um, it's the not not the game stealing sort of performance that we came accustomed to seeing him last year. And mm -hmm. like we said last year, more stolen wins in the NHL than anybody besides Igor Shosturkin, who won the Vezina, mm -hmm. was up for the heart for in a lot of people's yeah. mind. So. You know, that's not there. Now, again, we, we've covered this before. He has kind of notoriously slow starts to the season mm -hmm. uh, where it usually takes him maybe a month or so to really get in his groove. And the more um, and the more time he's going to get, uh, that's his stats are probably going to go up and we're going to start to see him get in a rhythm a little bit. Um, but, yeah, not not an ideal first three starts for him. No. Now, I will say the thing that is making me not um, panic to, and, and not that we're panicking, but just kind of the thing that is a caveat in my mind is so much of training camp and preseason was about Lankanen and Ingram. And so Saros really didn't have much happen in the preseason for him. I mean, what, we saw him in like one game, two games? I believe he played one game. Yeah. So that's where I'm kind of like, okay, like I don't – I this is not going to be UC Saros in late November. But it is not the same Saros that I think we were used to. It's not the same saves that we were used to maybe seeing before. So, yes, I think that's a great way to say it. Like it's not – what. We're used to seeing, mm hmm yeah. But, yep. but that's a weird thing to talk about because, again, like, yeah. you can't blame it all on him because there's a couple of plays. Um, I, I don't remember if it was the Rupe Hintz goal or the Miro Haskinen goal um, in, in which, like, um, it was it was like the, the first Roman Yossi play uh, from the other night, but at this time it was Matthias Eckholm that just, like, Yes. You watched him and it was just like, what are you doing? Like, that's like, that's like an AHL call up going up against Connor McDavid, like that kind of mm -hmm. play. It's like, like he just like retreated, like didn't step up, didn't do the space. And the guy just had like a easy shot past Saros. Yeah. And I've just watched that play. And it's like, what is that? Like, what is, mm -hmm. what is this team doing defensively? Because we saw it. The other night, when when Roman Yossi just kind of did this haphazard stab um, at can't remember who it was, Jason Robertson maybe this kind of haphazard mm -hmm. stab uh, at the puck got totally beat, and then Philip Forsberg kind of just like glided yes. slowly behind him without any effort and trying to make a play in the puck. And I just watched that, and I'm like, what what's going on? Like, where are the Nashville Predators that like? 
fight for every puck or, you know, make it incredibly difficult on this team to score. Like, where is this? Like, this is yeah. becoming kind of like, 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 it's like, what are you doing? Like, what yeah. are you doing? Like, there's so many of those plays so far this season. There are a lot of what are you doing plays and, and it's a little bit alarming because it's not a new system. There are a couple of new faces. And I, and I do think, you know, look, Matias Ekholm has had a rough couple of games here. I mean, and that's not an easy one for me to say. But I think that that's just a real evaluation. He's had a rough couple of games. Now, he is now at game speed playing, you know, the a, a different side. And so his reads are going to be different. And he may have to still be thinking in his head instead of playing as he gets used to that. Um but it there have been in these you know these first four games i think there were a couple of them even in prague there are moments of like what are, what you doing there yeah. you know and 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 again i caveat the predators have had a shortened preseason you know because of the trip to europe and they didn't have quite as many preseason games and in all of that kind of stuff so i think everybody needs to breathe through it but let's just be honest and say there are definitely some what what's what you doing moments so far. And hopefully they will become fewer as we go. Yeah. Let's hope so. Uh, because yeah. they need to clean those up. All right. So Predators this week, uh, LA Kings at home tomorrow. The Kings are, you know, so, so start to the year one and two. Uh, then they go on the road to Columbus mm -hmm. on Thursday. Blue Jackets haven't won a game yet. They do not look like a particularly good team. Uh, and then Philadelphia Flyers at home yeah. on Saturday. I don't think anybody knows what to make of John Tortorella's Flyers right now. But, hey, they're 2-0. They're undefeated. So, um, you know, kind of a mixed bag. I mean, the Predators are got to be looking at the Kings and um, the – and the Blue Jackets game, and be like, okay, this is this is maybe a chance for us to flex our Turn muscle. Ground, yeah, yeah, it would yeah. be good. Now would be a good time. Yeah, uh, let's hope so. All right. Well, we will uh, have a full preview of the Kings game tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast. Uh, again, you can listen to us on any platform where you get your podcast: Spotify, Amazon, Apple anything just name a podcast platform you use we're probably on there make sure you subscribe if you're watching this on youtube uh be sure to subscribe also but also hit the bell notification that way you will be notified when we have new episodes and where can the people find your work you can find my work at insidethepreds.com and you can find me on twitter at ank underscore mama on ice I'm Nick Morgan. You can find me at onthefortrack.com or follow me on Twitter at underscore NS Morgan. That's going to do it for us today on the Locked on Predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Back with an all new episode tomorrow. We'll see you then.